All right, so thank you very much uh, for all, all, all of you for being here tonight. We're going to be talking about content marketing. So the question is, what is content marketing? So the definition according to Google, what I found today, is this nonsense here. Content marketing is strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing blah, 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 blah. Here are what content marketing is about. Content marketing is about co creating content to have you pay attention to me or you or your brand, what your business is about. That's what it's about. Right? It's not about anything else. This is not English literature. It's not you know you writing a poem or anything. It's about having people pay attention to your brand, what you're up to. So when did marketing, con uh, content marketing start? I'm talking about old world, right? Content marketing, like really, really, like well, how we did it, like in the old world. Not that old. I mean, because this is when we started with content marketing. And then we evolved to tablets and stuff that we carved in stone. And then we went into Gutenberg, which was in the 1400, invented the press and everything. I'm talking old world like 2010 to 2012. <laughs> like that's, that's how the vast majority of businesses or blogs that we see are people are creating content like it's 2010. And guess what? It's not 2010 anymore. We can't be writing content like this anymore. So. Why? And let me, let me establish the, the reason why is because there's a lot of bad habits and a lot of myth about content marketing. A lot of bad habits and a lot of myth about what we have to do. And a lot of them, you're going to recognize them because you heard them at one point or another. So the first one is we need lots of it. We need a lot of content. Like two to three times a week. You remember, who remembers people saying you need to have two to three blogs a week? I remember that. I went to conferences. They say, yeah, you need a lot of blogs. A lot of blogs. Just put it on. Like, cram it up. Like, just have at it. Right? That is a complete myth. And we came up with crap like this. Like, everywhere we went, we had, like, blogs about blogging and blogging bloggers and blogging as you could be. And it's just, like, it was just completely overwhelming. An enormous amount of junk. Um, the second myth is Google needs a lot of new, fresh content. It needs new stuff. It needs it fresh on a weekly basis. That is a complete myth. It's not true. Right? They're always crawling for new stuff. That is not, it is true that they are crawling the internet all the time, but that freshness overrides quality is not true and that's where the myth happens is people say well if I just put consistently a lot more content then that's going to do the trick well it doesn't you know Google crawls the internet it's not looking for fresh stuff it's looking for quality stuff uh, the, the the other myth that I've heard is like people are too lazy to scroll like we should have you know short pieces of content you know it can be too long you know, if it's too long people are not going to read that Right? The short and sweet is the way to go. That's a myth. Like, so everybody was thinking that all of a sudden everybody was Seth Godin. I don't know if you know this guy, but he's world famous for posting a daily blog at 5 p.m. and they're usually very short and sweet. You know, it's a, it's a thought of the day. It's sometimes it's like 100 words or less. But guess what? You and I are not Seth Godin. You know, Seth Godin speaks at conferences where there's 5,000 people. He has a lot of people paying attention to his brand. That's not the case for you and I. That type of format is not going to work. So all of that, all those myths, everything you've learned in 2010 and 2012 is crap. It just, it's, none of it works. Okay? So now we're going to talk about what works. So how do we get content marketing in 2017 and beyond? Well, the first one is we should focus on quality not quantity. There is absolutely no question that Google will prefer quality over quantity. I would actually have you stop if you're still doing it because I actually I talk to a lot of people that stop writing blogs and they don't know it. They're saying, well, I was not getting any return on my investment. But I would say instead of writing twice a week or three times a week, just write one amazing piece of content per quarter. One. One is more, is better than a hundred any day of the week. 
you know, one piece of content a quarter, that's all you need. You don't need a hundred blogs to make your website be good. Just need one amazing piece of content. Utility content, your content has to be useful. It has to be resourceful, it has to be helpful. You know, unless, again, you have a degree in English literature and you can move people or tell a story like anyone else, which is a great skill to have, which the vast majority of us don't have, then be useful. Provide content that provides value. Tell me how I can solve that problem. So if I'm in retail, for example, and I'm selling clothes, you could write a piece of content, the 10 ways to dress yourself to impress her on a date. That would be an amazing piece of content. Because you would be providing something that would be like, huh, okay, well, I'm trying to, you know. And you can think, I could go around the room like that. Real estate, the five best school in Boca, you know, or the five best Italian restaurants in Palm Beach County. That is a piece of content that would be useful to me. And now all of a sudden, she's generated traffic to a real estate website. And you would say, it has nothing to do with real estate. That says, yes, it has everything to do with real estate. Her job as a realtor is knowing everything that's going around. And the same goes with you. All of you, every single one of you, what piece of content could you create that is useful, resourceful, or helpful? In, a, in essence, think about it, what's in it for me if I'm writing that piece of content? Right, write a piece of content as in you're on the other side of the person, what's in it for me? Why am I going to read this? What am I going to get out of this? The third thing you need to do is you need to do your research. So that is, and I, and I put 30% of your time, this is where we as an agency spend an enormous amount of time, and I'm gonna talk to you about this, how we research content. We just don't write content. We don't come up with an idea and say, okay, we're gonna write about the five best Italian restaurant or how the five ways to dress. That's an idea that's coming up, but it actually, everything we write is researched based on what people are currently interested in. We actually are researching that. We're spending the time. What are people looking at? What is trending right now? What is of interest people? Like don't, you know, you, I, I don't have the answers and you don't have the answers. And there are some amazing tools on the market and I'm gonna show them to you that can help you like figure this out. Yeah, come up with the secret sauce for you and once you have the secret sauce then you can produce content that is going to be useful for you. So you have to spend your time researching. You know, you gotta spend your time on Google and some various tool like really thinking this through. Like, you know, what, what, how we're going to be, like, you have to come up with stats and graph and images and videos that are going to be helping you craft that story and that piece of content. So, the, the third thing about uh, Google, uh, which is important, which is um, what Google favors over everything is relevant. How relevant is your piece of content for what people are searching for? The authority of your website, so the authority has to do with, if you just started your uh, website last month, it has zero authority. And if you've been at it for five to 10 years, well, you have some authority. And the way they look at authority is how much time people are spending on your website. Well, if you have crappy blogs, how much time do you think they spend? Versus a super useful, very helpful piece of content. They're gonna be spending a lot of time. That is a signal that Google is looking for. So the more useful your content is, the longer they're going to stay, the more authoritative your website is going to be. And sticky, what I mean by sticky is how long they're staying on the page. They're sticking to your page. Think about it like, how can I make people stick to my page and not like look at it like, you know, very quickly and be out in 30 seconds. Does that make sense? In essence, you have to have the best blog. You have to be far above and beyond the competition out there, whoever is writing a piece of content. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step how to create those pieces of content. Because I, I did promote that I was gonna give you a step-by-step. -step. This is how we do it as an agency. And this is how you need to do it in order to be successful. The first one is you have to do your research. Right? And how you do your research is we're using a tool that's called BuzzSumo. So I know about BuzzSumo, the first thing I want to tell you is it's not free. It's not free, it's, I think it starts at 99 bucks a month. 
it's not cheap either. We have the agency, and I believe it's uh, $300 uh, a month for the agency because we can have multiple uh, users at the same time. It's not a free tool, but it's an amazing tool. An amazing tool because what I've done right here, and if you look at the top, the top bar, is I put content marketing, which is what we're doing right now. So I could put men's, uh, men's uh, jackets or whatever topic I'm looking for, real estate or buying a house or whatever, whatever topic you are, or SEO. And what Bussumo is going to tell me, it's going to tell me right there, well the first one on the left is the filter by date. So I can say give it to me in the last 24 hours the last week, month, six month, year, five years, I can change the language, I can change the country, I can change the word count, and I can do all kinds of filter, and it's going to tell me the most shared content right now on the internet. Do you think that that's a valuable piece of information you should know? Right there, the number one piece of content in the last year is eight trends that will shape content marketing in 2017. Was shared 24,000 times. Do you think that would be an important piece of information to know if you're writing about content marketing? Right, big time, right? Like you need to know about that piece of content because you're, co you're competing against that. Now hold on the question, we'll do it at the, at the end, sorry. Um, and if you click on the sharers, or who share this, which is one of the buttons there, it actually is going to show you the people that share that piece of content. Every single one of them with their handle on, on, uh, on Twitter. So you can actually reach out to those people. Let's just say you create a, another amazing piece of content on content marketing. You might want to communicate with those people saying, hey, I noticed that you share that piece of content, but I've created one that actually is better than the one you shared. Well, that's, you know, that's one of the ideas. So Buzzsumo for me is a must absolutely have if you want to be serious about content marketing in 2017. Now, the second thing is actually Google. So that Google, uh, you guys have heard of Google, right? It's free. Everybody can, uh, can use it. And what I did in Google is I put content marketing and I went all the way at the bottom. So that is actually an amazing piece of information right here, that. The searches related to content marketing. Google is giving me all the answers right there. What it's telling me is it's telling me people that are searching for content marketing are also searching for content marketing examples, types of content marketing. It's actually, it's writing right now. What I'm doing with this, it's a, all I need is a title and I have each paragraph of my piece of content I'm gonna be creating. I'm going to have a paragraph about content marketing examples. Then I'm gonna have one types of content marketing. Then I'm gonna have one content marketing strategy. For every single piece of content you have out there, you can go to Google, and by the way, you can dig in there. Now I can click on content marketing, go at the bottom of the page and get more in depth about that, and so forth and so on. These are called, we call them an SEO LSI, but they are basically our suggestion or content suggestion by Google. This is a gold mine for anyone doing content marketing. This is where we start, and then we go in Basumo. Now, the third tool I'm gonna to show you, that's a little bit more advanced. This is SEO, this is technical, but I think it's an amazing tool. And again, if you're gonna be doing content marketing, you should know about that. It's called SEM Rush. And what we do with that tool is, we actually are looking for our keyword. We're seeing how much value does it have on, on the internet right now. And content marketing is being searched 14,800 uh, th th 14, times a month. So that would be a pretty uh, strong keyword to be searching for. So that could actually tell you, okay, that keyword does not have a lot of traction. If you're saying it's being searched 50 times a month, you know, you might wanna look for something that has a little bit more meat to it so you don't waste your time writing a piece of content for a keyword that nobody is searching for. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Uh, it also gives you the, uh, the keywords, the related keywords and phrase keywords. So that is all information that's important. That's the research, spending the time to dig in and uncovering what am I going to be writing about. Uh, 
one of the techniques that we recommend, or we do here, and it's actually an amazing technique, is if you're going to be writing a piece of content about anything on the internet, you need to use what is called the Brian Dean uh, skyscrapers technique. So what the skyscrapers technique is, is looking at the first 40 pieces of content on the internet for the piece of content you want to write about. So this is content marketing. I have the first 10 results on Google. I'm going to click on every single one of them. I'm going to print those pieces of content and I'm going to learn what it says about content marketing. Because my job is to write a piece of content that is better than that. Because if I don't do that, I have zero chance of ranking. So if you're going to be writing a, blog, a piece of blog about the five best restaurants in Palm Beach County, or five best Italian restaurants, your job is to find out if I do that, what is Google telling me the 10 or 40 best pieces of content are? And your job is to think, okay, I need to do one that is better than that. So the skyscraper in essence is you're looking at the skyline and your job is to put a building with 20 stories higher than everybody else. So you get picked up by Google. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So the second thing is the format. Now the format of your blog. Well, how are you gonna be writing that piece of content? So you obviously you have what is called the list, right? The list is the top 10 or the 25 ways to, it, in essence, it's, it's going to give you a list of things, right? So it's very helpful. Everybody has seen that, right? The five ways to, the, the 10 best, or the five best restaurants and, and whatnot, the list. The second one, and we've done, and I'm show you an example of that, is called the crowdsource. Now the crowdsource are a little bit longer to produce because they require actually to have the crowd generating it, but there are no awards or tips. So for example, uh, one that we've done, which was for a large frame shop in Miami, is we reach out to interior designer and ask them to give us a tip on how to best to display art in the home. We reached out to 357 of them and 54 of them replied to us, here's my tip on how to best display art in the home. Guess what the name of the blog was? 54 experts tell us how to display art in the home, right? We're just using, we're leveraging the crowd, right? In, in order to produce a piece of content. Now we reached out to these 54 people and we told them, thank you very much for giving us your tip. Here's the blog that we've produced out of it. What do you think those people did with it? They shared it, right? So the, the 25 best restaurants in, uh, in Palm Beach County, you just go out there and you could say, can you, can you give me uh, the, 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 the best uh, attribute of your restaurant? They're going to say, of course I'm going to give it to you. So you put a picture, you put the name of the restaurant, you put the best attribute of that restaurant, and then you go to those 25 restaurants and say, I've put you in my, uh, in my, uh, in my blog and here it is. And those 25 restaurants are going to say, we made the list. Uh, a guide also, a resource step by steps, like a guide on how we've created a guide, uh, and I'll show you that example too on domestic violence. You know, if you're a victim of uh, domestic violence, what are the resources available to you? It's an amazing guide. Uh, I think it got, uh, we just released it just recently, it's already fourth on Google. Right, it's an amazing guide. It's just extremely resourceful for anyone that's a victim of it. So we've produced something that actually helps the community and helps people out there. You know, we're not saying here, oh, by the way, if you're a victim of domestic violence, please come and see this lawyer. Like, uh, of course, you know, you want to do that. But we actually are providing something of value to people in that, uh, in that world. Uh, three to 4,000 words, like no kidding. Like no kidding. That's the type of volume you need to do. That's why I'm saying once a quarter. Like this is the six to 800 word blog that's just not going to cut it. It's just not. It simply is not. It doesn't have the value of when people are browsing this thing and they're seeing 800 words, they're going to say, oh, that's just another piece of garbage content. Like, you have to put meat to it. Like, I'm talking 3,000, 4,000 words. That's actually five to six pages length of content. And the myth that people don't want to scroll is a complete myth. That's not true. That's not true. They will scroll down. Look at your own behavior. You've known, you've seen those pieces of content that is giving you an amazing, like a lot of resourceful and you're scrolling down and you're saving things. You actually are printing it, some of you, and you're saving it. You put it in a three ring binder 
And the reason why you're doing it is because it's an amazing piece of content. That's the type of stuff you need to do. Lots of multimedia, images, graphics, graphs, uh, videos. It has to have it all. Like it has to, it has to have meat on the bone. Can just be words. Like who wants to read words? It's got to have graphs and pictures and whatnot. Like if you're going to do the the ten best restaurants, it needs to have a picture maybe of the owner or or the restaurants and one with the best dish and just have some stuff. Like you know, like provide some something that's visually appealing. If they have a video, put the video. I mean, which restaurant is going to say no? You can't put my video. They're going to say, of course, go go for it, right? Uh, so let's talk about SEO now because you need to actually SEO your piece of content. SEO stands for search engine optimization, right? Everybody's got that, right? Um, so your uh, blog needs to be SEO optimized. So one of the things, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but in the SEO we used to say the 1% uh, density of keyword. It's completely obsolete. So it means that if you are writing a piece of content about content marketing, you cannot have the keyword content marketing more than 1% in the piece of content, right? So if you have 100 word, you have it one time. If you have 10,000 word, you can have it 10 times. That is complete baloney. It just, it's, it's, it's complete crap. There's actually no basis. And actually, I was an SEO guy that used to say that. I actually, <laughs> I used to say that in 2010. Oh, the one person is the rule. Absolutely not. What is the rule is actually the LSI. So what we're seeing is that what Google, when it scans a piece of content, it's going to look like, okay, so you're telling, you're telling Google that piece of content is about content marketing. But what it's also looking is, it's looking at all the related search term. And if your piece of content not only has the main keyword, but also all the related keywords, guess what that means for Google? It's relevant. Obviously, you're talking about this, but also talking about all of the stuff that people aggregate. Remember, Google is not, Google is very smart, but it's, it's an algorithm that actually is doing that. It's a, it's a, a popularity contest, right? Uh, short URL is important. Having a short URL for your, uh, for your blogs. So website.com forward slash content marketing guide. Not this atrocious thing that you have below. Right, which is, I, I see that all the time. We still have some blogs, by the way, we've done that still are like this. Like, my very important blog about how much I know about content marketing, right, that it says that. The right, yeah, the right way to do it is short and sweet at the top. Remember, Google is scanning this stuff. Like, my very important blog about how much I know, all this is irrelevant for Google. All it's focusing on is content marketing. So content marketing what? Content marketing tips, content marketing guide. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? That makes sense? Your title is super important. Include number and brackets. The data is telling us that having a blog that has a number and a bracket in it actually helps you. And the reason why is because when you're searching for Google, if you look at those two pieces of content here, the first one say, how to build backlinks in 2017, and parenthesis, new guide. It kind of pops from the rest of all the others that kind of blend. And then the one is says 17 untapped backlink sources updated. They just pop. So you know, obviously don't abuse that. Don't just put brackets for the sake of brackets. But think about if I'm going to have parentheses or brackets, you know, how I, I could, you know, it, it basically up, it could be updated or, you know, new, new uh, newly produced or newly uh, created. You know, just brackets and numbers are very helpful. Um, use, you know, one of the things you want to look in news media is they are extremely skilled at making you read articles on their website. Huffington Post, the entire business model, like, I, I don't know what the percentage, but I think it's over 90% of what you have on Huffington Post is not published by them. It's actually links to other articles. How they got popular is being extremely skillful at writing titles that get you to click on it. So go to Huffington Post or go to CNN or go to those big news outlets and look at how they're doing it. Look, 10 things you need to know now that Julia Stiles is pregnant. It starts with a number and 10 things you need to know. It's very smart. Like if you think about 10 things you need to know about Palm Beach County Schools. 
Ten, you know, five things you need to know about getting dressed for an interview. You know, just things like that. So just use, leverage the news media because they are extremely skillful at that. Uh, again, uh, Buzz Sumo is an amazing source for that. You know, the the the. Uh, I'm, this is a, a screen from ba Buzz Sumo again, and it's it's about uh, content marketers and and content marketing. You know, five reasons why your business needs to start making vertical video for social media. Again, the blogs that have a tendency to be the most shared or usually have an amazing title. So I'm not saying copy their title, but inspire yourself from it. Right, look at what they're doing. You already have the truth. By the way, you can do the same thing on Google. Go on Google, the first 10 pieces of content have a great chance to have an amazing title to start with. So look at that and see if that can inspire you to create a great title. Social triggers, I, 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 you need to know that because this is super important in terms of what gets people to share content on the internet. So the first one is utility. 30% more share than anything else out there is how useful the piece of content. The length of content, we're seeing that pieces of content that have more than 3,000 words get shared more often than those that have less than 3,000 words. Positive emotion. 94 more shares. If you have a choice between negative and, and, and positive, go positive. Po that's what we like, that's what we like to share. One is really interesting here is social currency and I think you'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a looking good factor. Oh, I shared this, that makes me look good on uh, Facebook. Who's, uh, who's guilty of doing that? Sharing a piece of content on Facebook just to show how smart you are or how nice you are or how smart you are. Raise your hand, I know you're there. It's like all this, yeah, there you go. And, and uh, keep your hand up, and you didn't read a damn word on that, on that article. You didn't read anything, but you shared it, because it made you look good. Yeah, the looking good factor. So if you create a piece of content that actually could make someone look good, what's in it for me? Well, make me look good. If I post that on Facebook, I want to look smart. And storytelling, we love stories. Like if you can tell stories, um, God bless you. You know, it's, it's an amazing skill to have in 2007. We cannot get enough of stories. Stories will, will rule the day. So those are the social triggers important to know, right? Now the next thing you need to do with your content is to promote it. So how do you promote it? Well, you have this thing called Facebook which is amazing in terms of advertising. And what we do with a piece of content, we know that producing a piece of content is not going to be enough for people to, to reach people and to put it in front of them. It's just not going to be enough. So what we do, well, we, lever we leverage the 800 pound gorilla in the room called Facebook, which is where the vast majority of our attention is going to. And we actually publish content. I'm, the vast majority of those pieces of content, we just advertise 20 bucks. You know, who has $100 they could spare a month to promote their content? You can create an amazing target market. You know, like people that are interested in this, people that like that page. I'm not gonna say like, people that like Men's Warehouse. I didn't tell, don't tell me that I lied, told you that. But people that like that, I wanna reach them. Or people that like Italian food. Or people that are into that. You know, people that are in that age group. Like, you know, uh, who buys a suit that you're selling? What age are they approximately? 35 to 55? Do they make a certain income? You can actually do all that in Facebook. You can say they're in that zip code, they're at that age, they make that type of money and they like this. Now let me put my piece of content in front of them. See what happens. Provide them useful tip. That is how you promote content. That piece of content here was uh, with uh, a law office. Uh, we put 20 bucks uh, on it. We reach 22,238 2, people for $20. And out of that, a thousand of them engage with it. That's an amazing deal, isn't it? For $20. A, tw a thousand engaged, that means they clicked on it. All right, so you need to promote and find uh, people that are going to uh, backlink to your content. I'm going to show you some examples now. Okay, so to wrap this up and everything, I'm going to show you some examples of what we've done so you have a, a, a context of what it looks like. So that's actually the piece of content I was telling you about earlier. 54 experts share their best tip for displaying art in the home. Took us three months to produce. 
three months because we had to write an email to 357 people which we identified through BuzzSumo as graphic designer in Twitter graphic design, no not graphic, interior designers in the United States and we reached out to every single one of them and say you're a great interior designer in the United States. We've found you from Google. We'd like to know if you'd be willing to share. You were trying to add, we're producing a piece of content aggregating. What are the best tips to display art in your home? Out of 357 of them, 54 responded to us with their tip. And they're on that piece of content. So we put their picture, their tip, a link to their website and a link to their Twitter. And then we send uh, 54 of them an email saying thank you so much for sharing that uh, that tip with us it made a huge difference because now we have an amazing piece of content and here is a link uh, a copy uh, a link to the blog and uh, thank you so much guess what they did with it Woohoo! I made the list they bragged about it of course they did and is it you know we did I mean it's it wasn't deceitful, we just said that, you know, I mean, it's not like we're actually created a piece of content. It was an enormous amount of work on our side to do that. The return on investment, that's how to display art in Miami. That's position number for my SEO people, that's position number four. I actually, we went down, we were position number one uh, for the longest time. The reason why is because that client has stopped uh, promoting that piece of content which we pointed it out to them. And I says, by the way, you used to be uh, number one. You're now number four. Yeah, if you don't promote it and everything. But I don't think it's going to go very far because it's an amazing piece of content. It's still extremely valuable. It's num it was number seven worldwide at the peak of the thing. Now it's number 20. It went down to 20th place nationwide. So it's the bottom of the second page. How to display art worldwide. Now another piece of content that we've created is domestic violence, the ultimate resource guide. This is 100% providing resources to people that we didn't create. We just aggregated it together. We're saying here are the six things that you need to know. The shelters, the centers where you can go for help, what are the financial implication, what you can do to protect yourself financially, what are what do you need to know about the law? We aggregated those pieces of content, and we put that into one piece of content. Took us an entire month to put together. And uh, number two, nine ultimate resources for domestic violence guide in bracket in Fort Lauderdale. Second piece of content that took us a uh, uh, one month to actually rank number two on Google. Uh, not too bad, right? And then the reason why is because we created a piece of content, we promoted it, got an amazing amount of traffic, people stayed to it, they say, oh my God, this is great, they shared it, they backlinked to it, and there you have it, right? I mean, that's the, uh, that's the, res that's the recipe to do it. And uh, the, the next one is 10 important things to know with phone harassment calls. So this is a law firm that actually is in debt collection. Uh, they're protecting people against abusive uh, debt collectors. They're calling you and harassing you and whatnot. So we created a 10 important things you know. This is a list of things you need to know if a phone, uh, if a debt collector is harassing you. By the way, the reason why the keyword is phone harassment, we were going after debt collection. The keyword we started with was debt collection and TCPA, which stands for Telecommunication, telephone, communication, protection, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Consumer Protection Act. That research brought us to phone harassment. See, people were not looking for a TCPA lawyer or a debt collection lawyer. They were sick and tired of being harassed on the phone. We're like, ding, that's what the piece of content is about. Because that's what people are looking for. See, they're at home and they're getting called at work and they're getting called on their cell phone and their brothers or their mother or their employees getting called, they're getting harassed. That's how they're experiencing it. So that was the piece of content. That's what we needed to produce. That piece of content is number one on Google. The, the one that's above is actually an ad. So we're number one on Google for that. Again, we created an amazing piece of content. That's, that's how we think. That 
actually gets people to read an amazing piece of content that actually makes the website even more valuable for the, uh, the law firm. Does that make sense? You guys get the connection now? So people are saying, well, I want my uh, debt collection lawyer page to rank better. And I'm like, I can't do that. It's boring as heck. Hi, I'm a great lawyer and I do this and I do that and here are testimonials and it's like, what do you want me to do with that? There's nothing I can do beyond like creating a page and then optimizing it, but then after that I'm like, that's that. Creating that page is what actually drives traffic to the page. Does that make sense? All right, so let's recap and as we close. Number one, quality is the way to go. You cannot, it's not about quantity. It's not about quantity. It's stop like, you know, if you have a goal and say, I'm only going to write one piece of content this year, then that's all you need to do. Then I, I think that that would be a great strategy with content because the, the type of work you have to do is going to, uh, is going to demand uh, that. Number two, the content has to be use, uh, resourceful and useful. It has, to be, it has to provide value. Number three, do your research. You have to spend an enormous amount of time on research. Don't just go and write a piece of content. Make sure it's backed up by data or what people are interested to. And the fourth thing is promote, promote, and promote. Promote that piece of content. You have Facebook, which is amazing. For the vast majority of you, Facebook is going to be a, a treasure trove of opportunities to promote that content. And sometimes for a whopping 20 bucks a week. I'm talking about chump change to promote your content. 